I'm Ann Paycheck. I'm one of the senior artists at Visible Body. When I took biology in school, I had a hard time understanding photosynthesis. I understood the equation of it. I understood the outcome. I understood the reactants and the products. But we were just used to seeing it as an equation, maybe as a picture or a diagram. But now I think watching, well, the way we decided to show photosynthesis was three different levels of the model. So we show it at the plant level, we have an animation of it at the chloroplast level, and then we have an animation even zoomed in farther than that at the thylakoid level. I think this gives the user an opportunity to understand the bigger picture, a little smaller, and then to zoom way in and fully understand. Another thing that's really nice is you can pause the animation and learn what structures are actually on the screen and learn what's actually happening rather than just C6H1206 and you know the reactants and products as they are written out in, a, in an equation. When I heard that we were going to start to make a biology app, I thought, wow, this is huge. I thought it was such a different route than we were used to taking. We were starting from nothing, so it kind of seemed impossible until we really got going and we started with plants. That was a fun place to start because it was so different from what we were used to working on. So we picked up momentum. We started with the plants and then we moved to blood cells and then DNA and then photosynthesis and more biological processes. So that has been really fun and made it seem possible to take little bite-sized pieces. And now we have a version of the app. When we found out we were going to start working on a biology app, we were working on a pathophysiology app. I was focusing on a chunk of brain, and so I had made a healthy brain section and a diseased brain section. It was kind of difficult to shift gears, but it didn't take long. Once we shifted gears and we were working together as a team to make our biology app something that was comparable to our Atlas app, it was really fun and it was easy to collaborate and work together and make models that matched and fit together. So it was maybe hard to switch over, but once we switched, it was easy to keep it rolling and get it going. My favorite model that I worked on is a drop of blood on a microscope slide, and it is to teach about red blood cells and platelets, activated and inactivated platelets. The challenge with this model was deciding how to show something of such tiny scale. We had to really play with the scale and take artistic license so that we could figure out how to teach what we wanted to teach using this 3D model. The challenge of the model was I had never worked on anything before that was gonna have so many different textures. So the model ended up a drop of plasma and we wanted that plasma to be translucent. We wanted the user to be able to see through the drop of plasma, the liquid, so that they could see the different types of cells inside. So we worked really hard to figure out how we wanted the drop of plasma to look and how we wanted the user's experience to be as they could zoom inside of the droplet and see the red blood cells and also realize that they were looking at a glass slide so that it was something they were familiar with even though they had never seen a 3D interactive model of it, they could recognize it from something they had seen in their textbooks and in their classes. We start with a sketch we get external reviewers' feedback on the sketch. We get market feedback on what the users want to see. So a lot goes into even just the initial stages before we even begin to work on the model. Once we know what we want the model to look like, we build a rough version of it. We get that reviewed. We decide everything we want to be shown in the model. We do another version, get that reviewed, make sure that we're on the right track and then we start to finalize the look and feel of it and how we want the user to interact with the model. And then we take into account the finish we want on the model and all of the different textures we want and we, how smooth we want things to look and how shiny we want them to look and how realistic we want them to look. Creating moving simulations was something we had never done before in the 3D interactive micro model state. We, as a team, have made a lot of beautiful animations that teach our users all different sorts of topics, but making our models interactive was brand new to us as a team. These models probably took, in the beginning, twice as long as they should have, because we were trying to learn new processes and new techniques, trying to make things work across the different platforms and programs and build that we would use 3ds Max to build the models, and we could get things to animate there, but 
We had to also have them work in Unity, which is our game engine, and as a team that was new to us. I love the final product. I can't believe what I thought it would be compared to how it turned out. And we're still working and it's still being built, so I know it's just gonna get better and better. And the more models that are built, the fuller the app is gonna be and the better the experience is gonna be for the user. I have always been very interested in genetics, so I'm really excited to see the DNA models and to see how they will help users learn such difficult, complex, tangled up processes and concepts.